Now please welcome to the Fifth Ted stage, Principal Paul Saborian. existed. Everyone encounters them. Your grandparents, the president, some ladies. <laughs> All of these people have told, heard, or touched stories at some point. Science has recently been doing some incredible work with stories and shows tremendous promise for our collective future. <laughs> and the future of stories. <laughs> but before we can discuss where we are and where we are going, we must first understand where we have been. So to provide some context, I would like to briefly walk through the complete 200,000 year history of human storytelling. <laughs> I have approximately six minutes, so let's get rolling. <laughs> Roughly 200,000 years ago, Homo sapiens emerged in East Africa. This new hominid's increased capacity for abstract thought and use of symbolism to creatively express culture led, over the subsequent 150,000 years, <laughs> to the development of the first stories, followed almost immediately by the first comment sections. <laughs> A tradition grew in which ancient humans would gather around their fire at night, while the weakest and palest tribe members would spin the fanciful tales in a desperate attempt to make sense of their frightening, harsh existence, and to get noticed by the more attractive members of the tribe. With the development of writing in the Bronze Age, the earliest written literature came out of Sumeria with the instructions of Shurapak, Egyptian pyramid texts, and most notably, in 21st century BC Mesopotamia, the Epic of Gilgamesh regarded by many as the first great work of literature. It tells the story of a young boy with great powers who is whisked away to a magical school for young wizards and witches. <laughs> the 8th century BC brought central works of the Western canon, the Iliad and the Odyssey, stories attributed to a blind poet named Homer, <laughs> but which were in actuality written by Dalton Trumbo. <laughs> The rest of you Google him later on. <laughs> Over the subsequent five centuries, the Greeks wrote many stories about naked people, gods, and naked gods. The Romans wrote about laws and ethics, and steadfastly refused to round off the bottoms of their ewes. Also somewhere in there, Confucius wrote The Art of War and the Tao Te Ching, and Mahabharata wrote the Ramayana. But as with most high school curricula, we are going to pretty much just skip right past Asia. <laughs> Please, I've got a lot to get through here, people. As BC turned into AD, the next 15 centuries saw Roman Empire rise and fall, and an ongoing series of crusades, plagues, and monks scribbling in abbeys. Some highlights from that period. 1138. Geoffrey of Monmouth publishes the first narrative account of the Arthurian legend, eventually leading to the single greatest achievement of the modern era. 
1351, Boccaccio's Decameron, the story of a group of young men and women attempting to escape the Black Death in a secluded tavern telling tales of wit, <laughs> practical jokes, eroticism, and tragedy. 1439, Johannes Gutenberg debuts the printing press. 1441, Gutenberg releases the printing press 2S, which uses an entirely different power cord than the original press. 1526. The Tyndale Bible is the first to be printed in English, leading to 1,500 years of uninterrupted universal peace throughout Western civilization. 1589 to 1614, William Shakespeare publishes 38 plays and 154 sonnets, a body of work now proven to have been written by a consortium of writers, including Christopher Marlowe, Francis Bacon, Edward de Vere, William Stanley, Sir Walter Raleigh, Mary Sidney, Mary Shelley, Mary Queen of Scots, the British House of Lords, the 69 Mets, the 2nd, 4th, 5th, 7th, 10th, and 11th Governors, Frank Darabont, Richard Bachman, two milkshakes, and a pair. And you're only a messenger, really. <laughs> Given my time limit, I'm going to have to blow past the 17th through 19th centuries. An era marked mostly by inconvenient collars, corsets, and waistlines, and also Moby Dick. <laughs> In the early 20th century, the development technologies of radio, film, and television led to many new avenues of storytelling. Some artists took full advantage of these new media, but the path was fraught with peril. <laughs> And it is predicted by, that by the year 2047, all forms of written, visual, and audio media will be dedicated solely to the continued expansion of the Marvel Universe. <laughs> I'm running out of time, so I'm going to have to fast forward here. Uh, blah, 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 Fitzgerald. Blah, 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 Gertrude Stein. Blah, 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 musicals. Blah, 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 books everyone says that they like, but nobody actually does. Blah, 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 blues. Blah, 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 Cold War. Yuppies, fatwas, cyberpunk, graphic novels, dreams, Canada! Four steps, young adults suddenly learn how to read, and J.K. Rowling kills millions upon millions of trees. That brings us back to where we stand today, and what I am here primarily to talk to you about. One of the primary hallmarks of storytelling is the illustration of conflict. Traditionally, there have been four general classifications of conflict in literature. If you'll pardon my use of the patriarchal tense, these are man against man, man against nature, man against society, and man against self. But NASA has been doing amazing research for the past decade, and through a grant from the International Council of Literature Ontological Studies, they have discovered an incredible 14 new classifications of conflict. <laughs> It is our firm belief that these new classifications will help usher in a brand new era of storytelling, story classification, and increased grants. <laughs> these new classifications are Man Against the Machine, Man Against the Clock, Man Against Burrito, Man Against Mannequin, Man Against Ikea, Man Against Khan, Man Against Man. <laughs> and to be fair, we all know who will win this. Man Against Superman. Man Against Bizarro Superman. Superman Against Evil Unshaven Superman, who splits off from Good Superman and then they fight in a junkyard. Man Against Hair. Man Against Facial Hair. Man Against Prequels. And Last, and absolutely least, man against ethics in journalism. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time.
Now, would you please welcome to the stage a brief musical interlude from Paul and Storm. <laughs> 